Hey, and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing how to create a circular custom throbber using DaVinci Resolve. The method for this video comes from the YouTuber Motion Resolve. I will leave a link to his YouTube channel down in the description. So with that, let's get started. In DaVinci, if you don't have it, I will leave a link to where you can find it on the website. Hey, just a post edit insert. I just want to say that you don't need to use the software that I'm going to use in this video. I'm just using it because it's a software that I use on a regular basis as it is the same software that I use to edit the video. So I use it consistently. If you're just going to use it for this, for the purpose of this video and it's a once and done, then I don't see the point of downloading it. It is quite large. I think it's between two and a half to three gig. So if you're just going to use it once and then never look at it again, then there's no point in it. If you do have Blender, then you can simply just make a looping animation in Blender and then render it out using the PNG setting with the alpha so that you can get the transparent effect. So if you import it into Unreal Engine, then there won't be overlapping between the background image and the custom loading animation that you have. Because the whole point to this is just to give the player a visual indication that the game is still running if it does take a while to load up the level with that let's get back to the video when you go to the link that i'm gonna leave in the description you will be greeted with this screen davinci has two versions it has a paid studio version and a normal free version so the studio version is obviously more powerful than the free version but the free version has everything that we need for the purposes of this video and then once you click on the link, you'll be taken to another screen where you will select your particular version that you want for Windows, Mac, Linux, or Windows ARM. I don't know what that is. So if you have Windows, just click on Windows and then you'll have this screen over here where you'll have to fill in a couple of details. And then after that, you can register and download the software. Then once you open the software, you will be then greeted with a different screen where it will ask you to either create an untitled um, project or if you look on the little window it will have a new project down at the bottom button and then once you select whichever option that you want then you'll be greeted with this screen so from here what we're going to do is where it says no clips down here make sure that you are on the third selection which is this one over here which is edit there are cut media fusion color fair light and then deliver we're going to be using the edit so it says no clips in media pool right click and then head over to new fusion composition and then you can name the composition whatever you want i'm just going to leave it as fusion composition one i'm going to set the frame rate to 60 and then i'm going to hit the create and then from here you drag the fusion comp onto the timeline and then leave it there and then with the um i will refer to it as a header the header can be anywhere on the fusion comp it doesn't matter as long as it's not off the fusion comp because it's not this is not going to work or over the comp and then you head over to fusion and then you'll be greeted with this part here uh, if you don't want the split screen uh, version of it you can simply just select whichever one you want here by the viewer and then select that and then it will select whichever viewer left or right as the main one and then down here you have your nodes so you have a media out by default. So what I'm going to do, I like to have everything arranged to the grid. You can either just free ball it, but then with the grid, it snaps to the lines. So for this method, what we're going to do is we're going to select a background over here on the far left and then just drag it off to the side. And then from the background, just connect that to the yellow by the media out. And then you can see by the media out, there's a there's two options here, a right and a left. These represent the two screens over here. So as you can see with the right selected, it has a display on the right, but not on the left. And if you select the left, it has the same display on both. Because you select both, if you deselect the right, then the right will then disappear. You can do this. This is, this is so that if you have multiple things and you want to see how the progress progresses, then you can have the media out on one side and then whatever you're working on on the on the whichever side you want and then you can track it like that but we don't need that we're just gonna work on one so then from the background we are gonna make sure it's selected by the way make sure the media the background is selected and then over here where it says eclipse 
select that and then it will create a mask for you so then it looks like this so with the clip selected now we're going to head over to the controls and by the inspector and then we're going to deselect the solid and then where it says bottom width going to select that and then put a one so it's 0 0.01 so it looks like that we're also going to change the color for the background if you want to change the color you need to select the background then it says color so we're going to change it to the usual color that we've been using for the videos so with that then what we're going to do is on the position not on the position itself but over the slider we're going to right click and then we're going to say modify with enemy curves enum curves or enemy curves and then we're going to head over to the modifiers and then you can see here you know you have this enum curves on eclipse one position so we're going to select the mirror and then by the source leave it as transition the curve we're going to set it to easing and then the in out you can there's multiple options you can select from here i'm going to select the quad and then that will be it and then we're going to head back to the tools and then over the length we're gonna right click again modify with nm curves and the reason i did it like that is for some reason i don't know if it's a problem with how it's set up now or it's just the version that i have but if you do if you try and do both at the same time then you run into this problem where you cannot adjust the top one and only the bottom one will be available so the position will kind of be locked and then only you'll have access to modifying the length so the workaround for that is to first do the position set um set up the settings and then go into the length and then set up the set all the settings are going to be exactly the same but if you don't do the settings then the outcome is going to be slightly different so but you're going to do the same here with the curve linear I'm going to set it to easing sorry about that then the in out we're gonna set it to quad as well and then we're gonna set it to mirror and then if you press spacebar you can see the animation happening over here so that's what it's gonna look like so if you deselect the mirror then you end up with that so you can see that as soon as it comes back then it just is like this very charring movement where it just snaps so if you put the mirror on then it makes like a proper it looks like a loop anyways it creates the illusion of a loop happening and that can only be done if you select both the mirror for the length and the position so with that done what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this because this is this is essentially it finished as is this is the custom dropper but we're gonna make more so select the background and the clips you can simply just drag over it by pressing and holding the left on the mouse and then control c control v and then just drag it out to the side and then with the two still selected make sure they are still selected hold shift and then drag them over the line you have to make sure that your mouse cursor is actually over the line not just the nodes themselves and then you end up creating a merge and then these will merge the background and eclipse you copied with the one that was created uh, before and then we're just going to move these around a bit just to make sure things look nice and then what we're going to do with this one is we are going to make multiple of them and so to make that we're going to select the background actually know the eclipse and then we're going to head over to where it says within height and then we're going to change that to 0 0.4 0 0.4 sorry 0 0.4 so now we have the outer one and then the inner one and then to offset them a bit i'm actually going to do this for both i'm actually going to set this one's angle to 90. then the second eclipse i'm going to set it to 210 and then I'm going to do it one more time. Make sure to select the clips in the background. Control C, Control V. And then hold Shift and then drag it over the line. Create the merge and then just move everything right. And then this last one, I'm going to set its angle to 330. 
and then I'm going to change the colors. This one, I'm going to leave it as that. The background for the second one, I'm going to change it to a complementary color. Something maybe like blue, turquoise blue-ish. Like a light blue. And then the third one, I'm going to set it to for like a greenish yellow. And then now with that, if you hit spacebar again. Oh, sorry, I forgot to change the last one to 0 0.3 0 0.3 so now this is what it looks like it's space bar this is what the loading is gonna look like and then to add a little something extra to this select the last merge and then if you hold control and press space bar you get the select tool there are a lot of tools you can select from here but the one we're gonna use is this soft glow to the add a little glow to it and then it looks like neon lights you can adjust it if you want to i'm just gonna leave it as is so from here this is pretty much it this is the final product but if you try and export this if you head over to deliver then you can see that there are a lot of selections but none of them is um, picture frames which is what we're going to need for um, importing this into Android Engine. So we're going to head back to Fusion and then by the soft glow, make sure it's selected again like as so, so we can see. So by the soft glow, we're going to make sure it's selected. Then we're going to head control spacebar. And then what we're going to look for is a saver and then select the saver, add. And then on the saver, there are a couple of settings here. We don't need to worry with any of these and then what we're going to do is we're going to head to browse and then we're going to save it somewhere so i'm going to save it in the folder i already have one says loading screen renders and then we says save as type select all and then by the file name make sure you add the dot png so that it knows that it should be rendered out as images and then save it and then as you can see here the saver says bang boom on this and then it says dot png and then from here you head over to fusion and then it says render all savers and it will render all of them out and then once it's finished rendering you'll get a message that says render complete and then we're just going to go double check to make sure that it was in fact rendered so you should have all the images like this in your selected folder this will be correct and then we will use this um, in the next video when we import them all into Unreal Engine and then set up the loading screen but that brings us to the end of this video and until the next one